you hear me? I'm going to go ahead and share. Okay. Uh, Hey, Rob. I need to get with you in the next week or two. I want to do that sign. Okay, I go in. I've got a ball. But I'll have to get my, I'll have to get me some big post. And I'll have to get the thing. I've had that on my mind. I just ain't had time. I've been running like a...
giving praises to the Lamb of God. Amen. 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 And Amen. one of these days, I do mean to be there. Amen. 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 And we're going to take that journey someday. And uh, they're going in the morning to make arrangements. And so we'll know more in the coming days. And uh, But we want to pray for Mike and Becky and, and Katie and Brookie and Kyle and all that family. I got all of them right there. Boy, that's a miracle. Hallelujah. And, uh, we spent the day with them, so I, I got know. to know them real good. Play and, basketball with them. Play basketball the with uh, Braden, and we just had right a drive to the house down. That's just like a pastor when he comes to visit. Turn <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought that up. I'll just go ahead and get tonight. I looked in my study room there and looked in the floor, and I, I Tony, I took uh, two church songbooks home. You took that? Well, I'm glad I know I'm not the only one. I had some in there, but I thought you left.
revival that would call upon your name. And I thank you, God, Lord, for this people, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for each one in the, in the fire and the hunger that they have, Lord. And I thank you, God, Lord, for this church and what you're doing, what you're going to do, what you have done. And, Lord, I just believe it tonight in faith that great and mighty things are just ahead. And, God, I pray tonight that your mighty anointing would fall down upon us. I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost would just sweep through uh, that we would have an invasion of the power from on high and God that it would sweep through this place uh, and Lord that we would have a Pentecost experience Lord uh, and God that we leave here tonight lifted up above the shadows of this life uh, and God that, uh, that every worry, every dark cloud would dispel, uh, every trouble would be driven away uh, and I pray tonight that your presence would be manifested uh, and Lord I pray over every need that's in this building, uh, every home, every family, every individual uh, that we lift them up to you before the throne of grace. Uh, I pray tonight, Lord, that each one would find help uh, in their time of need. Uh, and Lord, we ask you tonight as we open up your word, uh, as we study your word, I pray, God, uh, that Lord, you'll give us divine wisdom, uh, that you'll give us insight, that we can grow in grace and knowledge. Uh, and God, that we'll see, Lord, that your word uh, is written for us. Uh, it's written for us today. Uh, and Lord, that we can take your word uh, and we can plant it in our hearts and it'll find a place uh, to be embedded where it would grow in us, God. Uh, and that word, just as Jeremiah, would be like a burning fire inside of us. Uh, and Lord, we want to walk in the spirit. We want to we wanna move and do everything that we do uh, according to your will. Uh, and guide us and direct us tonight that your words go forth. Uh, and Lord, we just thank you and praise you uh, for all that you do and God we love you tonight with all we have uh, and Lord we can't help but to love you uh, and Lord not only that but God we're in love with you uh, you've been so good to us you've provided for us uh, you have given us everything that we've ever needed God uh, you've given us food on the table you've given us a shelter over our head uh, and Lord may we never take it for granted what you've done for us uh, and God we lift up the Harper family to you tonight uh, I pray Lord that you'll wrap your arms of comfort around them uh, and show them, God, uh, express to them uh, that wonderful love, Lord, in this time of hurt uh, and this time of trouble, God. Uh, and, Lord, we just praise you tonight in Jesus' mighty name uh, and all God's people said. Amen. 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 Let's give them one more big praise. Hallelujah. Philippian church and Paul. They loved Paul and Paul loved yeah. them. It 
there was a church that Paul founded. Most of them, if not all of them, were saved under Paul's preaching. And so you remember Aphrodite, he was the pastor of the church there at Philippi. They met in his home. You know, they, they, uh, they found a place together. Amen. They found a place to assemble themselves together. And so this is really a, just a tender love that Paul is writing to them. Paul is there locked up in prison. And you know, they, the church at Philippi, they, they took up a love offering for Paul and they sent it to him. And they helped him and they ministered to his every need. Hallelujah. And so tonight we're going to be in Philippians chapter 2. And when I think about Philippians chapter 2, I, I begin to I think about the unity of the church. That's what Paul's going to talk about about tonight is the unity and the fellowship of the church. If the church doesn't have unity and fellowship, then God's work can't be done. Amen. And so the church has to be one. We are the body of Christ. Uh, you can't be a body when you've got an arm over here and a leg over here and, and a foot yeah. over here. The, the body has to work in unison. And so we that's how God uh, gets his work accomplished today. You and I as the church of the living God, we are the hands, we are the feet of God. We ought to be about the Father's business today. Too many in the church are just playing around and maybe Sundays and, and, and Wednesdays is, is good enough and the rest of the week they just do what they want to and they, they're just holy on two days a week. But you know we're called to holiness seven days a week, 365 Amen. days Amen. a year, 52 weeks oh. out of the year, all our life. We're called to holiness. We're called to live in godliness. We're called to live a life of righteousness and soberness. Uh, that we can live and we can work for God because we have to realize there are souls that are around us that are hanging in the balance of heaven and hell tonight and it's up to the church uh, to get this good news out, hallelujah to Amen. tell the world there is hope uh, to tell the world there is an answer to tell our families and our children and our grandchildren uh, and our mamas and daddies and our brothers and sisters uh, and our neighbors and those around us uh, that there is an answer, that answer came some 2,000 years ago at Calvary's Hill uh, on a bloody cross uh, where yeah. Jesus became the sacrifice uh, and his blood atoned for the sins uh, of this world. Uh, not only did that blood cover the sin, but his blood washes sin away. Hallelujah. Yeah. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Uh, and the only answer for America, the only answer for the world, uh, the only answer for sin uh, is the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why the church has to work in unity. That's why the church has to be a unit. That's why we got to have fellowship and communion. That's what communion means. Uh, communion means fellowship. When you take communion, that means you're in fellowship with the blood of Jesus uh, and with what Jesus did at the cross of Calvary. Amen. Hallelujah. So Paul is going to talk about that when you go through uh, Philippians chapter, well, the whole book of Philippians. Uh, you see Paul suffering. Now you would think and a lot of us, and probably including me, uh, if we were locked up in prison as a Christian, locked up for doing nothing but good, doing nothing but the Lord's work and get locked up for it, a lot of us would be discouraged. We'd be ready to throw into town. That's why we said Sunday night, to me, the book of Philippians uh, is like a song, uh, a song of praise and rejoicing uh, because yeah. it was down at Philippi where Paul and Silas in the midnight hour locked yeah. up a cold, hard floor, uh, began to lift up and praise the Lord Jesus Christ right. at the midnight hour. Hallelujah. Yes. And the Bible Whoa. says a great earthquake came. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, that's why I admire Paul, even though he's locked up in prison for doing the work that God called him to do. You see many times in the book of Philippians, uh, there was a certain joy that Paul had. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I'm telling you, that gives me inspiration tonight that when all the demons of hell are surrounding you, you can still have joy. Hallelujah. That'll get you through. Uh, you can still have joy. Glory to God. Uh, that joy weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Uh, and the joy of the Lord uh, is our strength. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness in this Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Paul locked up here. But he says many times this joy that he had, and this joy really came from what he saw out of the church at Philippi. 
It's what you know when I think about the church. If somebody said, "Get to the," I'm getting to the scripture. I'm trying. Y'all preach a man to death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when I look at the church in Philippi, the Philippian church, you know what I think of? Now I'm not, you know, casting any other church out, but I just know Grace Union. This is home. This is family, and I know you. So when I look at the Philippian church, it reminds me of Grace Union. Oh the unity and the fellowship and the love that they had one for the other. Amen. Amen. When you have love and fellowship and unity, things will happen. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Philippians chapter 2, and Paul's going to talk a little bit about uh, unity. He's going to talk about humility. He's going to talk about humbleness. And there's one great pattern. That has been laid out for us. And that's the pattern that Christ laid out for you and me. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 verse 1. Did that say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If you're ready to go, say ready to go. Ready to go. And through the word, not home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 2 verse 1. Paul said, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ. Now, First of all, that word if should have been translated since. And so that word if there be, you know, that whole phrase is kind of a joining connection between, to me, verse 27 through verse 30 in chapter 1. And let me go back and read. He said, only let your conversation, that's your conduct, your lifestyle be as it become of the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent. I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit. Somebody say amen. 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 Stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together yeah. for the faith of the gospel. Amen. In other words, we've got to stand together to further yes. the gospel. You can't, you can't further the gospel, the good news, unless the church stands together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Amen. Amen. Don't let your enemies terrify you. Amen. Amen. Don't let the breathings of Satan terrify you to where you're just going to sit down. I can't handle it no more. But Paul says, in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition. In other words, it's proof of their destruction. They're trying to stop you from getting the gospel out to the world because Satan and his forces, they don't want this good news. They don't want this. Uh, yeah. their, their, their whole job mission is to torment people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so he said, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Yeah. Paul said, you know, I'm going through this. I'm going through this persecution. I'm going through this suffering, but I'm not defeated. I count it as a privilege. Come on, man. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to read verse 30, and then I'm going to go right into chapter 2, verse 1, because it goes together. He said, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now, now here to be in me. Since there be therefore any consolation in Christ, that's encouragement, if any comfort of love, that's godly love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, that's, that bowels means tender mercies, and that word mercies means compassion, fulfill ye my joy that you be, somebody say ye means me. Ye means me. That Ye be like-minded. That speaks of unity. Amen. Amen. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Amen. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Right. That means don't go around and forming cliques and forming That's sounds right. and doing this and doing that and, and trying to get personal gain and doing things to get attention from man and trying to get, that's called vain glory. Yes. Don't be trying to do things to show that, that you're some great holy mama calls them holier than thou or holy Joe, that's what she calls me. Hallelujah. 
that don't do things to get merits and accolades and try to show that I've done this and I've done that. But Paul said, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Amen. And that's so don't do things to be recognized. Right. Yes. Don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. He said, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Now that's humbleness. In other words, we, we lift one another up. We put one before us. Now, when you've got a church full of people that don't care about themselves, but they care about the welfare of others before themselves, that's speaking of godly love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, look, not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others, the concern of others. Right. You know, if you have need of something and I've got this and I don't need it and you need it, I ought to have the mindset to give it to you that you can use it for your benefit. Hallelujah. So we have a concern for others. That's godly love. And when the church doesn't exhibit these things, it's not a church. Amen. Amen. It's a function. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, I mean, even the Pharisees done all these great things, but they spit in the face of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. They would say, oh, I, I love you, but, you know, that's a lot. You know, when you have love, it's not just speaking it, but you prove love. Amen. Right. You show love. Hallelujah. And so we ought to have a concern one for the other. And that's what I see here. When I see somebody that's hurt here, we all hurt. When I got the call this morning that Miss Vaughn and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to miss those big hugs every Sunday morning. And when I got that word this morning, I'm telling you, it just hurt. I, I just hurt in my soul. I, I, you know, it's a, you know, it's all right to sorrow. Paul said in First Thessalonians four, he said it's all right to sorrow, but don't sorrow like those that sorrow that have no hope. We we sorrow because we, uh, as we said uh, this morning over there, what is earth's loss is heaven. Game. And so we're going to miss them for a little while. Hallelujah. And so, you know, when, when one hurts, we all hurt. And that's the way the church functions. Uh, when, you, when you've got a church that's in fellowship and in unity, and it's just like the body of Christ that Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians 12, when one hurts, we all hurt. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. Hallelujah. And when you've got that kind of functioning in the church, then you have a true a New Testament church. Uh, you have a true church of the living God. Hallelujah. And so we put the concerns of others before ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. So Paul is talking about the loneliness of mind. He's talking about being humble. He's talking about humility. Now, he gives us the greatest example of humility that has ever been given. Yes. And so he said this, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So he's talking about the mind of Christ. Let this mind that Jesus Christ had. And he's talking about humility here. And Jesus humbled himself. Yes. And so you and I ought to exhibit that same pattern. We humble ourselves. So how did Jesus humble himself? Well, Paul said, who being in the form of God... Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Amen. He came Amen. as God in flesh. Amen. When he was on the cross, he could have called all of heaven's army to come down and take him off that cross. As a matter of fact, he could have sent the word in the Garden of Gethsemane and all those soldiers would have fell over dead at the Amen. word of Jesus. Yes. Why? Because he is God. Amen. Amen. But he was clothed with flesh. And there was a reason why. And so the Bible says he, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but <coughs> made himself of no reputation. Yes. And he took upon him the form of a servant. Glory to God. Amen. And was made in the likeness of men. Now, Amen. you get right here and a lot of folks look at this. And they say when Jesus died on the cross, he lost his deity. The Bible does not teach that. Jesus never lost his deity. What he did do when he went to the cross, uh, hallelujah, when he went to the cross, he, he was like those lambs.
lambs of the old covenant that had to come and be sacrificed every year on the day of atonement. That was all according to Jesus Christ. And what happened when those little lambs and goats were sacrificed and their throats were slit and they were slaughtered and the blood ran out? It was that blood of those animals that that only covered sin. But when Jesus went to the cross, the Lamb of God, the sins of you and me, well, you know, the priest had to lay the hands on the on the lamb's head, and that was a transfer of the sins of the people to that little lamb. When Jesus was on the altar at Calvary on the cross, uh, the sins of all humanity yeah. was laid up on him. And yeah. for a few moments, uh, God had to turn his face uh, because God cannot look upon sin. Uh, that's the moment Jesus said, My God, my God, uh, why hast thou forsaken me? Yeah. It wasn't really a forsaking by God, uh, but all the sins of the world was laid upon Jesus, and God could have had to turn his head for a few moments. Uh, and at that moment, Jesus didn't lose his deity. He laid his deity aside. Hallelujah. Because at that moment, he was paying for the sins of, of the world. You'll see that and my sin then. Hallelujah. That we could be set free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Amen. you know, he, he really, he just emptied himself. He didn't lose his deity. He emptied himself. And some said he divested himself of his deity. And, and really, his, somebody said, what's deity? Deity is his visible glory. Yeah. That's what deity is. It was his visible glory. He didn't lose it. He just emptied himself of it. Why? Because he was humble. Yeah. Even Amen. to the death of the cross. He didn't have to do it. But his sacrifice... He laid aside. Why? Because he had a concern for your welfare right. and mine. Amen. Amen. I mean, you think Jesus, all he'd had to done was told God, said, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. Yep. Yep. And Amen. we would have been in a hopeless situation. Right. Right. But he humbled Amen. himself. Now, Paul is saying, you and I, we ought to follow that same example. When Jesus said, no greater love hath one than one would lay down his life for his friends. That's speaking of you and me as well. That's not just speaking of Jesus. And you know, I've, I've just, even in the last several years, I've learned to count the cost. And I don't just say this just empty words. I mean it with all my heart. And it may have to come a day I may prove it. But I would be willing to lay my life down for my church family, for my friends, for my immediate family, because I'm not worried about self. Amen. Come on. I'm all right. Amen. I've made preparations. I'm ready. Amen. Death don't bother me. Amen. 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 My death, just like Jesus' death, was conquered. Yeah. So I have no concern for that. Hallelujah. Amen. But my concern is for the welfare of others. And I want to be humble enough to be able to put others before self. And that's what Jesus did. He put you before himself. Amen. Do you realize tonight he left all the riches of heaven. He didn't have to come, but he left all the glories of heaven, all the riches of heaven. And he came down to this wicked earth. And he endured the cross. And he, he became poor that you and I could be rich. Amen. And God help us if we ever Amen. take that for granted. Amen. 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 So that's humbleness. That's humility. And he took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. Yes. That's a big word. Amen. Amen. Became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Yes. So you have to understand when you look at the cross of that day, there was millions upon millions that died upon a cross. The cross was a criminal. Anybody that died on the cross died a criminal's death. Amen. Amen. Jesus died a criminal's death. Yes. 
Why? Because he took your place in my place. You and I were criminals. Amen. 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 We were criminals. Right. But Christ took upon himself our life, our sins, and he made a way Amen. Amen. to have newness of life. Amen. He died a criminal death. He was obedient of the death, even the death of the cross. Glory. Amen. I may shout here in a minute. Praise, Praise the Lord. I believe I'm in the right place for that. Amen. Amen. So now we saw the humility of Jesus. He humbled himself and what he did. And now we're going to see, we're going from the humility of Jesus, and now Paul's going to talk about the exaltation of Jesus. In verse 9, Paul said, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and has given him a name which is above every name. The name of Jesus. That name Jesus means Savior. Savior. He's the only Savior. He's the only answer. He's the only hope. That's why there's no other name given among men by which we might be saved. He's the, he's the cure for alcoholism. He's the cure for drug addiction. He's the cure for homosexuality. He's the cure, hallelujah, for gambling. He's the cure, hallelujah, for, for whatever problem you have. Jesus is the answer. His name is above every name. Hallelujah. at the name of Jesus. Don't you love that name? Hallelujah. I get to think about the name of Jesus. I mean, you say the name of Jesus, every devil in hell flees. Right. Right. All the hell trembles at the mention of Jesus' name. Whoa. Jesus. Jesus. You never having a bad day, having troubles, just start shouting, Jesus. Jesus. Hey. 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 Jesus. I feel that. Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That's talking about all the creation is going to bow down. And the Bible said that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Meaning Lord, that word Lord means master. He is master. Hallelujah. I mean, he's not just made him Savior and Lord of your life, but he's your master. Hallelujah. Amen. He's your master. Glory to God. He has complete dominion over your life, uh, over your home. Glory to God. And let me say that. Uh, uh, Drinks I tell you here in just a little bit. You be getting that song ready. I want you to sing it. Maybe you and Marla, Tony, all of you can sing it. There's something about that name. Yes. Jesus. Right. Come on, somebody. Yes. Give it a high Jesus. There's something about that name. I mean, we've got the, we've got the sound system on this well saying music. Use it if you got it. Amen. Amen. Oh. Now. <laughs> Paul's going to talk about the goes from the exaltation of Jesus and he begins to talking about salvation and how it works. When you get saved, it comes on the inside and then it comes on the outside. Yeah, right. He said in verse 12, wherefore, now there's one of those words that connects the verses together. So he's connecting that of the of Jesus being exalted. And now he's saying, Wherefore, my beloved. As you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. He said, but now much more in my absence. See, the Philippian church, they were steadfast in the gospel. They stood for the gospel. They had a fire inside of them. And Paul said, now, you, as you've obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, he's not talking about salvation like we would think be saved. He's not talking about these people were already saved. He's talking about for those that have all already obtained the salvation. But what he's saying, he's saying now that you've been saved, now you need to mature with it. 
You need to be mature. You need to no longer be babes tossed to and fro like children tossed to and fro in the waves of every ungodly doctrine and teaching. But now you need to grow in the Lord, grow in His Amen. Word, and be mature. Be a mature Christian. I tell you, I see a lot of immature Christians today. Hallelujah. Yeah. But Paul said, you need to, and he said, you need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. Now you need to grow in the Lord. Be mature. Hallelujah. I tell you, when you get a house full of immature Christians, you know what you're going to have? Trouble. Amen. Just like little children, I've been in them. <laughs> Just like I was a babysitter. Say amen, Jessica. You want to back me up, you were right there with me. Hallelujah. Just like we was babysitters. Glory to God. But what I like is when, when you get to a place like this and you've got some mature Christians that have worked out that salvation, hallelujah, with fear and trembling, you've trusted the Lord. He's everything to you, just like Paul said in Philippians chapter 1. He said, for me to live is Christ. He said, my life is wrapped up in Christ. Nothing else matters but being in Jesus, hallelujah. I, I know I'm going to die one day, but that, that, that die is going to be gained, hallelujah. I'm going to receive much more than I ever did in this life yep. when I die but as long as I'm here Christ is my life I, I'm going to be wrapped up in him I'm going to be entangled in him nothing else matters I may go to the grocery store I may go to the little country store and sit there with all the other folks and the farmers uh, and they talk about everything under the sun but when I start talking about Jesus uh, whether they want to hear it or not I'm going to keep talking about it because there's something about that name hallelujah there's something about when you mention the name of Jesus uh, have you ever been in a store or somewhere or around your family, hallelujah, you begin to talk about Jesus. Uh, all of a sudden you feel the goodness of God all around you. You know what that is? Uh, when you start talking about Jesus, all the demons in hell, they don't want to have no part of it. Yeah. When you talk about Jesus, uh, the devil don't want to stick around.
generation and in this nation, but I've made you to be lights that are shining. Hallelujah. And that light is reflecting yeah. the light from heaven, the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. Now, when you see that phrase, day of Christ, in the word of God, it always refers to the rapture. The rapture is the day of Christ. The day of the Lord is the great tribulation. It's not a literal 24-hour day. It's, it's a period of seven years, the great tribulation. That's the day of the Lord. But when you see the term day of Christ, that's talking about the rapture. And Paul is saying, hold forth the word of life. He said that I may rejoice in the, in the rapture of the church in the day of Christ. Uh, and he says, uh, because Paul did a great work down at the Philippian church, uh, he ministered to those folks. He helped those folks with the word of God. And he was proud of them. He was proud of how they'd grown in the Lord. Uh, and Paul said, he said that I may rejoice at the rapture, at the trumpet of God. Uh, and that he said that I'll know that I've not run in vain, uh, neither have I labored in vain. Uh, in other words, that I'll know that I didn't waste my time with you. Hallelujah. That you grew in the Lord. That you prospered in the Lord. You abounded in the word of God. And you walked faithfully. Hallelujah. You see Paul. It seems to me like he took a great responsibility for the church. Which is what a good pastor ought to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's my responsibility to feed the flock. And that's what I want to do to the best of my ability through the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Uh, and God helps some of these pastors that don't do nothing that have sheep uh, that you can count the rims. Uh, hallelujah. That they're starving to Amen. death. Uh, but I don't want to be that way. Hallelujah. Right. I want you to know there is a power that you can have. There is an anointing that you Amen. can have. And I want to do my best to feed the flock that I'll know that at the day of Christ, uh, at the rapture of the church, uh, that I'm not running in vain, hallelujah, that I've done all that I can do uh, to give out the word of God. Uh, and I believe, let me tell you, I don't like to use this term because who am I to say I'm proud of somebody? But let me say this, uh, when the rapture of the church takes place, uh, I want to be able to look over and say, glory, there's that grace union bunch, hallelujah.
They do all this and do that because they want the merits and the rewards and the accolades and all these things. Paul said, don't, don't work for that. Your reward will come. Amen. 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 Your reward will come. But it's stored up in the heavens waiting on that day of Christ. Amen. Don't work for rewards here. That's why, you know, when I used to sing and sing in groups, you know, they give out rewards and things. And I thought, I don't want no reward. That's not what I'm here for. Amen. I'm not here for that. I'm here to win souls to Christ. Amen. And I'll get my treasure someday. Amen. And I'll get a reward someday. Earthly rewards just... Lay that. Right. You give somebody a reward this year, next year be somebody else and you forgot. Yeah. But Jesus, my Lord, keeps a record yeah. of the moment I'm living down here. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, I won't start saying it again. <laughs> Paul said in verse 22, but you know the proof of him, talk about Timothy, that as a son with the Father, he has served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. In other words, I'm hoping to be released soon, so I'm, I'm going to see it. Matter of fact, Paul was released a short time after this. And, and Paul said in verse 24, But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Ephroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants, or in other words, that means needs. And, and so what happened was Ephroditus had brought a love offering to Paul. I'm sure Paul didn't have much. As a matter of fact, he probably had everything he had taken from him. Yeah. And so the church took care of it. Amen. That's what the church does. That's why we have love offerings. Amen. That's why Sister Marilyn has this needy children offering. And, and we have so many other things. that That's what we do. That's the church's operation. And let me say this. I'll just throw this in there for free. You know, if the church did what she was supposed to do, there would be no need for the government to do any kind of handout whatsoever. Amen. Amen. Because God did not design it to be that way. He designed it for the church to be the help, Amen. to minister to the needs of the community and to the people. And that's how God ordained it. He sanctioned it by his Holy Spirit. And so in verse 26, Paul said, For he longed after you all, talking about Aphrodite, and was full of heaviness because that you had heard that he had been sick. So Aphrodite had had some kind of sickness. And, and uh, in verse 27 said, For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him. Amen. And not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. And so Paul is saying, If this great man of God, Aphrodite, who was had the mind of Christ if, if he had died it would have been a great loss to Paul he was a great help to Paul Amen. and so that's what Paul's talking about he said I send him therefore the more carefully that when you see him again you may rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation because for the work of Christ, he was near unto death. Yes. And so, <laughs> the kind of that tells me that Ephroditus was a man who stayed busy for the Lord. Right. He, he worked, and so evidently he became sick because of overwork. Now, I'd rather overwork for the Lord than I had overwork spraying bugs. Amen. 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 I've had people say, well, you, you, you do too much, you're too busy. I, I, I just, I, I can't stay busy enough. Amen. I just love people. And I want to see people, I want to see souls saved. I want to see the church be comforted. I just, I just love people. And that's just what's in you when you're saved and born again. Amen. When you have the heart of God, Amen. you'll have concern for others Amen. over yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I don't want to be like Ephroditus and be so overworked I become nigh to death, sick, nigh to death. <laughs> yeah. And so 
Paul said, verse 30, because for the work of Christ, he was nigh to death, not regarding his life. Yeah. And that's how I feel tonight. I don't regard my life. My life, I, I, I want to live for Christ, be the best that I can be. There's the old saying used to be, uh, Brother David, be all that you can be in the army. I want to be all I can be in the army of the Lord. I want to be what God has called me to be. And so uh, I don't regard my own life. I think about others before me. And so he said to supply your lack of service toward me. And so uh, uh, I praise God tonight that God is faithful. And I can't wait till we get to what Paul said. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. Has he been good to you? Amen. Has he been good to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody got anything they want to say? Share. Testify. Praise. Thank the Lord for saving my soul. Amen. All he's done for me. Yeah. Never, never left me. He's always been right there. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, Brother Steve. Oh, family. Hallelujah. Somebody else? Oh, yeah. praise the Lord for all that he's done for me. Amen. If it hadn't been for him, I don't know how I would have made it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless you, Lord. You have encouragement. Amen. You are your steadfastness. And you stood. You're exactly right. Praise the Lord. I love you. Appreciate you. Now, Mark, you want to say anything? Do that. Get ready. If somebody else wants to praise you. I'd like to praise the Lord for his guys. Yeah. The things that they've been doing, the way he's helped them in the preaching and the things yeah. about us. Have no idea about it. I want to thank him for everything that he does. Um, I went out with some clients here the other day and we went to the Chinese restaurant and my fortune cookie it said you know anything worth having is not easy it's you have to battle for the last year or so you know my family's been battling a big battle and it's not been easy but we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel Dakota's been my biggest worry He's been clean now for six months. He's fighting the biggest battle of his life to get his kids back. I just pray that the Lord keeps him on the right track. I just pray that he comes back to church. This is where he needs to be. I think he's finally realizing that he needs the Lord to stay on the right track. <coughs> and that he needs the Lord for his babies because without him, he can't have them because he can't do it alone. And Mama's finally realized that Mama can't do it for me. So I've had to take a step aside, which is very hard. If he's at home right now, he works all the time. Like, it's all he does is work and sleep just so he can keep his mind off of stuff. Except for on Tuesdays, and that's when he gets to see the babies.
somebody else.